Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue talking about stream-based I.O., this time talking about how to get input from standard input with the CN global object. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our favorite website, CPP Reference, and have a look here. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to input output here. And again, we're going to continue talking about stream-based I.O. And today we're talking about the I or the input side of things. Again, so uh, if you haven't seen our previous lessons, we did talk about print for output. We've talked about C out, for instance, for various output. But today, again, we're going to talk about input here. Uh, so just looking at our little tree here, which we talked about about four or five episodes ago, so you can check that out in the playlist if you haven't been uh, keeping an eye on it. Uh, but basically from this little tree here, talk about the input output uh, stream base here, uh, I'm going to look at the right side of the tree today down to basic I stream. Again, I standing for input here for input streams here. Uh, and these are the types of objects we're going to look at here. Uh, and at the bottom sort of of this tree, you're going to see there's IF for input file streams and I string streams, which are the kind that we sort of control here. Uh, but we're just going to look at the basic I stream here, which is going to be useful for uh, C input. Uh, and again, let's go ahead and just take a look at that and take a look at the global object that I'm really interested in today, which is CN. Now, of course, you get two versions of this, just like with the C out functions. You've got the wide uh, C input version here. If you have uh, two byte or multi byte characters, and then you've got the uh, CN, which is just sort of the uh, you know read in one character, sort of the uh, English alphabet uh, style input here. Um, so anyways, that's what we're going to take a look at here. Let's just go ahead and open that up in another tab here, just so you can see here. Again, that's defined as uh, an input object. Again, we include the IO stream here. Uh, but again, you can see its type of I stream here. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Now, it is using the standard C input stream standard in. So again, if you're used to just um, C style stuff, again, we get this for free here. This is going to be similar to like your scan F and get uh, C and those types of functions uh, in the C library. And then also of note here, the C stands for character, so character input. That's where the name comes from. I usually would pronounce it as CN. Uh, some people might say SIN, but I, I think it's uh, character inputs clear or CN. <laughs> Folks will know what you're talking about here. OK, let's go ahead and do a basic example, and then we'll look at some of the uh, functions here. Uh, and let's just go ahead. We need something to input here, x, so we're going to store a value there. Uh, standard CN. And then I always think about the stream operators as where I'm writing to, like directional arrows, right? For our C out uh, stuff here, uh, we're writing to the output. So you see the arrow is sort of going in the opposite direction. So X is, and I'll put a little colon here, uh, and X, uh, and let's do an end line here. Uh, whoops. Let me go ahead and fix up a few of these things here. And let's go ahead and put our stream operators. And of course, if you mix these or put them in the different uh, directions, you'll get an error because <laughs> you can't mix those functions up. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and enter if it compiled uh, successfully, which looks like it is good. And then I'm running my program here. And then now it's just waiting for me to do some input. So let's just put in 5 or something. I'll put Enter, and x is 5. Simple as that. We've got our input from standard input. Uh, for free, it's set up with every process that we have here. Uh, let's go ahead and run again here, but this time I'm going to go ahead and hit space a bunch of times here and just put 57 and hit enter. And again, you'll see X is 57. So just really important to see that it's ignoring the white space here. Um, and again, that's going to be useful for thinking about input. A lot of the input functions are by default ignoring white space as the sort of delimiter. And then that's where it's going to read your standard input. So kind of nice. You don't have to worry about these edge cases or parsing every single uh, space, for instance. Um, now, if you do want to write your own sort of parsing functions, you can use like standard git and just read one little character at a time. Maybe these spaces have meaning for you. Uh, for instance, if you're writing a programming language like uh, Python, you know, I dare uh, <laughs> talk about that on this channel. Um, but uh, write spacing matters. That's just an example. Or formatting for different files or text documents or whatever. Uh, you might want uh, to keep those things and actually preserve those white spaces. So CN wouldn't necessarily be the right function for you. Uh, so you'd want to go back here and just look at, um, let's look at the other ice stream functions actually here. We've got the global object that's set up here. Uh, but we do have these uh, free functions here, like git, for instance. Uh, and I'll talk about these um, otherwise. But you can see that this one just reads one character uh, at a time here. Uh, so those might be of interest. So anyways, let's do some more interesting things with C in here. Um, let's see. So here's a nice little tiny example. I'm going to comment these out because um, otherwise I'm just going to be doing a bunch of input every time. Um, but let's go ahead and do uh, x, y, and z here. And again, let's go ahead and try to read in maybe three values from the user. So again, this is where streams can be useful, really nice and composable here. And 
uh, let's use our fancy print line function here. Uh, and I'll just write out these values here, x, y, and z. Uh, so again, you can see where print is kind of handy here, uh, where we can very concisely write out these values here. So I'm just going to do 10, 11, and 12. And you'll see nicely here, 10, 11, and 12 printed out here uh, from our input. So just reading in one object from the other, left to right, and you can see where it's uh, stored uh, correspondingly. Okay, and same thing applies to if I run this, if I put a bunch of weird uh, spacing here, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to uh, do the right thing here. Okay, uh, so that's the basic idea here. Um, now we can also do some other things here. Let's go ahead and keep moving along here. And let's go ahead and let's work with some other data types other than numbers here. So for instance, uh, let's work with uh, strings here. Uh, let me just comment out all this here. Um, let's go ahead and create a string here for a line. Let's do cn line. And let's go ahead and write out you know, our line is. And again, I'm mixing in streams here with print line, but it's just kind of nice. Um, so you might want to do some other things with it. Uh, let's go ahead and run this and say our line is, uh, hit enter, and it's just going to say our line is uh, r. Okay, so again, it's doing the same thing. Cn, again, is just reading uh, all the characters until it runs into a uh, white space here. Okay, so we can take a quicker look at it, right? This is the operator that we're using here, uh, the arrows, so I'll just highlight them there. We're extracting formatted data here. Let's go ahead and give that a click here. Um, and then you can see that it's, you know, basically overloaded for all the, the basic types here. Um, let's see if there was actually string explicitly. Uh, I guess string wasn't explicitly mentioned there, <laughs> but it is there. Uh, so we can see an example here. Uh, so again, anyways, we're extracting a value from in, uh, input stream, uh, potentially uh, skipping preceding white space, which we showed here. Uh, and then the value is stored in the given value here. And then you can see here, I mean, it's just useful to see in the actual uh, operator overload here that these are all by reference here. And that's how uh, this value is getting stored here, right? Uh, line that I'm passing in here, it's by reference. So that's why it's storing in this variable here, okay? Really important thing, just a subtle note here. Uh, if you've done some C programming uh, in C, we use scanf, right? So you have something like scanf, and then you'd pass in like, um, the address of the actual value that you're reading in here. And that's why, because you needed to store it in somewhere. But in C++, we have reference. Um, we can pass by reference. So again, that's why you get that uh, little reference thing there. Uh, let's see what else we got here uh, that might be interesting. Um, yeah, here's kind of interesting. I mean, this is building in the uh, string stream. So if you want to create your own, again, we have C in or the character input global object defined for us. So we don't really need to do this. Um, but again, the point of these uh, operators here for our stream, as you can see, it's reading in here, is that we can read in formatted data. So in this particular example for the stream, you see n would be 41, f, which is a floating point type, 3.14, and it's reading in those appropriate uh, types as you move forward. Uh, and then we've got to change the type of data that we're reading in with our format flag, and then we can read it in a value like false, for instance. Um, now you can, of course, just pass in zero or one here, but um, again, this is maybe a little bit more intuitive, or if you're parsing some data, uh, you could do that. Uh, let's play around with that just a little bit here, just to show, um, again, uh, some of the flexibility we have here. Um, let me go ahead and find set F here for setting the format here. Uh, let's go ahead and comment out some of these examples here. Again, just so we're not doing stuff forever here. Uh, and I'm just going to read in some other value here. Uh, C in, uh, oops, A, and let's go ahead and write out uh, A is, and then we'll go ahead and write out the value A. And let's just go ahead and make sure this works. Okay, A is 15, uh, fair enough here, okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and set some of the format flags. This might matter, for instance, if you're writing like a debugger or something, and you want to actually enter in values in hex um, or have them converted to hex or whatever um, in, in different ways, one way or the other, either in your input or your output. Um, we do have these formatting flags that are available, same as before here. Uh, let me see if we actually just have an example here uh, for, uh, and let's do it from, let's see, I guess we've got it from, yeah, I guess we've got it from iStream here. Um, let's go ahead and click on, let's do hex here. Um, and I'm just going to go down to the example here, right? Here's all the different flags we have. We do have to set this, uh, base field thing here. Um, 
And yeah, this is the basic example that I, I want us to, to grab here. Now this is doing it with C out. I'm gonna show you C in just so it's something different here. Um, but we can actually, uh, if we do this with C in here, so again, C in is just a globally defined object. That means it has member functions here, set F. Uh, and let's do, uh, let's see, standard. Let's see if I can just do standard hex actually. And then standard iOS base, base field here for the two parameters. Now this doesn't really, I guess I didn't document here uh, <laughs> the actual member function call. Maybe it is somewhere buried away in C++ here. Uh, let me see, can I just do that? No, it's gonna complain to me. I need the actual format flag. Uh, so I need to do it as is shown here. I wonder actually, can I just do iOS too? There might be a, let's see here, overload. No, okay, I'll just do the whole thing. Uh, standard iOS base hex. Okay, so that's working. Hands are off the keyboard. It's waiting for some input. Let's go ahead and put in 10 here. Uh, and then it says A is 16 all of a sudden. Okay, now why does it do that, right? Um, well, let's kind of put together some of the things that we've done so far. Uh, I am setting my format flags to read this in as a hex value. Okay, so what is 10 in hex? Well, zero for the uh, sort of least significant digit and then one times our base 16, that's gonna give us a value of 16. And then C out is just writing that out in hexadecimal, right? And then as we learned before, uh, let's go ahead and just do this in uh, hex here. Okay, I'll go ahead and put 10 and then I'll get 10 back because it's writing out in, in hex here. Uh, now let's do just a little bit of a, uh, you know, so you don't have to ever use one of those calculators from decimal to hexadecimal here. Uh, let's go ahead and do something like see out, enter a value in decimal, and let's put a little semicolon there. Uh, so it's going to enter a value in decimal uh, 10, and it's going to say A is A. Okay, <laughs> let's do another example here. Enter a value in decimal. Let's do uh, 11, which is going to be, uh, well, B. And if I do 12, I should see C, and you get the idea here, okay? So now that's a nice little uh, calculator you have here. Uh, now I wanna do one other example here that I think is gonna be relatively common uh, for you. Um, and let's actually revisit this example here. Um, and again, we're just playing around with this just a little bit here. Uh, where we're reading in a string here. So again, just to remind you here, uh, some string, and again, CN just reads in you know the first value here. Uh, but it's going to be pretty common that if you have a program, you want to read in the whole line, and then maybe you want to parse it and, and break it into little tokens yourself. We call that tokenizing. Um, well, that's one of the terms for it, right? With uh, lexing uh, would be the other for you compiler people. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the get line function here, which is just going to be handy in your input. Uh, we might talk about this a little bit more when we talk about files, because usually when you read in a file, you just read in one at a time here. Uh, but this basically is just going to extract characters until the given character is found here, okay? And I think by default here, um, let's see, uh, it'll read, yeah, the first equivalent is until we get uh, to the end line character here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, and you can see there's a couple versions of this. Let's see if we can find uh, which one we want here. So there's the get line here that is reading data from an IO stream into a string here. And then we've got this version, which is just get line. Let's see the character type. What's this one giving us here? Um, let's see, what is input? Oh, this is from an I string stream. Let's take a look at this one. This is part of string. Okay, since we're working with strings here. Um, yeah, th this is the example that I want here. Uh, you know, this is basically just a free function here. Uh, that's gonna take some input uh, and then some string type where we wanna write things and then the delimiter, which is most of the time just gonna be an end line character, I believe here. Let's see if that's, uh, I don't know if that's default provided. Yeah, it seems like there's a couple overloads here. Uh, but let's just go ahead and give it a try here. Uh, but the main thing that I wanna show you is that uh, instead of uh, doing this, what we want to do, if we want to read in the whole line and then parse it, I'm just going to use this get line here. And then we're reading from standard in. And where is our standard in? Well, it's this global object, right? This is some sort of string buffer that is able to read in uh, stuff. And then we'll store it in the line here. And then let's go ahead and run this. Compiles, hands are off the keyboard. The full line that will be stored in the variable line is you know, dot, 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 
And there it is. Okay, so that's the whole thing. It's going to give us until the uh, end line character or the carriage return or whatever here uh, for our input. Okay, uh, so that pretty much are the main useful things here for C in and just understanding a little bit of how it works here, right? We looked at uh, some neat little tricks here where, of course, you've got your basic example, but you can read in multiple values because, again, these are streams. So we're reading in formatted data here and extracting the text. Um, we looked at some other tricks here for just formatting. Again, this is just a global object, so we can call member functions on it. Uh, and then, of course, this is probably just going to be something handy here, get line here uh, from the standard input. Now, of course, if you're not reading from standard input, if you're reading from some other file, for instance, keep in mind that this is just the uh, sort of uh, file handle, if you will, to where you're reading input from. And then you can now parse a file line by line and sort of understand that. But we want to start with the default globally provided one see in here. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. Hopefully you enjoyed that, folks. As always, you can check out these lessons and more uh, on this playlist here. Again, it's uh, free here if you want to track your progress. I've got my other course where I talk about um, reading in data here and formatted data. So you can go ahead and try some of these things here with parsing image files here from that course. Anyways, uh, if that's of interest, that's great. Um, but let me know what you think. Let me know if you've used some of the other member functions or doing things interesting, or if you're actually using that decimal to hex uh, computation. I mean, it's built in. It's nice to just have it there. So you never have to, again, go to one of those online calculators. Uh, but as always, feel free to ask questions below. I'll look forward to them. And thank you again for your time and attention, folks. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.